let's say that we have some conductor and we give it some surface charge density let's say over here let it be sigma then we know that the electric field at a point just outside the conductor and also just inside the conductor for electric field just outside it will be equal to sigma divided by epsilon naught and cap and inside it will be equal to zero therefore as we can see that whenever we cross the surface of a conductor the electric field is discontinuous that is outside it has it is sigma by epsilon naught and inside it is equal to zero it has gone a discontinuity in its value and it's not necessary that we should have a conductor it can be any other material whenever the electric field crosses a surface charge density it undergoes a discontinuity let us study the discontinuity and let us find out the amount by which the electric field is discontinuous across the surface charge density so let us take a material or a sheet i'm drawing just the cross sectional that is the side view of the sheet and let us take a point just over here and a point just over here and let the electric field over this side be equal to this let us call it e1 and the electric field over here be equal be along this so let us call it e2 now let us enclose this two points in a loop so this loop must pass through these two points and let us make it a closed loop so we'll put arrows to indicate the direction now as we know that the line integral that is the closed line integral of electric field is equal to zero so the, when we integrate over this closed loop it should be equal to zero and one thing to note is that this width will be very small that is it will be vanishingly small so we will not include the contribution of electric field along this and these line integrals we will only care about these two this one and this one so let's see so let's first find e dot dl for the first we can take the components of the electric field so we will have one parallel component e1t let's say along this direction and also for e2 we will have along this direction so let us call it e2t tangential because tangential or parallel it doesn't matter so the closed line integral will be equal to e1t for tangential or the parallel components times the length of this loop let us call it l plus contribution from this one we can call it anything since this length will go to zero therefore the dl will go to zero and the integral as a whole that is the line integral as a whole will be equal to zero so it won't matter minus minus because dl is in this direction and e2t is in this direction so they are opposite direction that's why we have a minus 2t times l should be equal to zero from this we can deduce that e1t is equal to e2t there is no need to put the vector since these are just the components of the electric field therefore as we can see that the tangential components of the electric field will be continuous that is as we go as we cross the surface charge density the tangential component of the electric field will always be continuous that is it will always be the same and if we go back to our case for the conductor if we take the tangential component over here it must be equal to zero since the electric field inside the conductor is equal to zero therefore the tangential component of the electric field at this point must also be equal to zero that is why the electric field is always in the normal direction that is perpendicular to the surface of the conductor since the tangential component is continuous across the surface charge density and over here electric field is equal to zero so the tangential will also be equal to zero so the tangential of this electric field at a point outside the conductor must also be equal to zero 
So the only direction that is left for the electric field is the normal direction. That is why electric field is always in the normal direction that is perpendicular to the surface of the conductor. Now let us again take and let's draw a box. It passes through the conductor. Like this. And let the area of this cross section and this cross section be same. Let us just call it A for area of cross section. And again this length or this width will be vanishingly small. And now let's say again I electric field, let's say E1 was over here and E2 was in this direction. And now let us find the flux of the electric field through this box. Now for the first area of cross section, dA will be along this direction and dA in here will be along this direction. For consistency, let us just say that this is the direction of normal. So over here also, this will be the direction of normal. Now we can go on to find the flux. Flux will be equal to closed surface integral of the electric field. So it will be E dot dA. This should be equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. This is just the integral form of Gauss's law. Now, since this part will be vanishingly small, there is no need to consider the flux of electric field through these, through these parts. The only surface that we must consider is the end caps. That is these ones. So it will be equal to E1 and in this case we will write perpendicular P and times the area minus E2P times the area minus because end cap is in this direction and dA is in the opposite direction that is why and this whole should be equal to sigma which was the surface charge density times the area of cross section divided by epsilon naught. Therefore, we now see that E1 P perpendicular component of E1 e minus E2P is equal to sigma divided by epsilon naught. Therefore, we now see that the perpendicular components of the electric field undergo discontinuity and the amount by which they are discontinuous is equal to sigma divided by epsilon naught. And it is only the components which are perpendicular to the surface of the conductor or any material for that case. And the components of the electric field which are discontinuous are the ones that are perpendicular to the surface. Therefore, if we now go back to a conductor, we know that electric field inside is equal to zero and the tangential components are also equal to zero. And as we know, the electric field will be in this direction. Let us call it E for our case. Therefore, E1P will just be E since the electric field is only left in the perpendicular direction minus 0 since the electric field inside is equal to 0 should be equal to sigma divided by epsilon naught or E is equal to sigma divided by epsilon naught. We can write end cap which will be in this direction to show that it is perpendicular or normal to the surface. And this will be the net electric field over here. Now, as we know that it's a perpendicular component undergoes, that undergoes discontinuity, we can write that in a more compact formula. So we write E1 minus E2 is equal to sigma divided by epsilon naught n cap. This n cap will automatically 
take into account for the normal or the perpendicular components of these electric fields. So this will be our final formula. To find out the discontinuity of the electric field across the surface charge density of sigma. However, the potential is always continuous across any surface charge density. Potential is always continuous. However, since the electric field is equal to negative gradient of the potential, Therefore, the gradient minus del V2 should be equal to sigma divided by epsilon notch. We'll write end cap since the discontinuity is on the normal or the perpendicular components. So, this will be the value of the discontinuity when we write it in the gradient or potential. Or we could just use the fact that dou V by dou N is equal to gradient of v dot n cap and write it like this dou v by dou n dou v1 by dou n minus dou v2 by dou n is equal to sigma divided by epsilon naught here it will be minus over here also it will be minus since the electric field is a negative gradient of the potential so there will be a minus sign over here and that will be a minus sign over here as well. So minus sigma by epsilon. So this will be our final formula for the discontinuity of the perpendicular components of gradient and the electric field.